I'd like to welcome everybody out to the new Two Gig Tech Talk next <laughs> rendition. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Zach Anderson, technical trainer, back finally from a different department. And with us, we've got Scott Wadsworth, our other awesome trainer. Hey, how's it going? Yep, I never left. Yeah, you're, you're loyal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the OG now. Huh? <laughs> uh, you are now. You, you really have, you know, now that we don't have to roam with us. So, uh -huh. you know, we still have him with us. He's just gone different directions. So, uh, but it's all nice because to have all of us still in the same company, at least to be able to lean on each other, at least for knowledge and ping ideas and questions. And now that I've heard you guys have had guest speakers like Brian, one of our previous trainers. Yeah, back in the day. we did. We had him out for one of the one of them. I invited him in. You know, he was a oh, trainer awesome. at one. He was training with us at one point in time. You know, and obviously moved on within the company as well. So moving up to bigger and better. That's the goal always, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So. All well, right. Awesome. Well, I was thinking today uh, we could talk a little bit about uh, Wi-Fi keypads, right? Mm -hmm. That's one that we see a lot of calls about we i'm pretty sure you have i know i do get dealers reaching out asking about like how do i fix this i've got wi-fi keypads i can get right. to the customer's router i can see it but i can't get my keypad to stay connected to my panel or or to connect at all yeah. um, are those calls you guys you still get a lot yeah i think the big one i get is that they're like it drops all the time and i say you know what you can't control you can't control the whole in the homeowner's Wi-Fi and it will do that and our you know our Wi-Fi's do that. Mine does it, same thing, you know. Uh, when uh, I was asked to beta test this latest firmware version, that was one of the things they wanted me to put it on my Wi-Fi and I'm like, eh, okay. So I put it over there. I took it off the access point. I put it on my Wi-Fi and sat here and watched it go down, go up, go down, go up, you know. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just nothing you can do about it. That's what the Wi-Fi yeah. does. So if you don't like that, I just always I try to get it off. I then, um, how about yourself? Yeah, I try to do, tell them to get off the access, get on, on the access point or something like that, really, along those lines. Yeah, I generally will recommend uh, the access points first go to, right? Simplest solution. Use the panel's access point and run off that. Um, and then I usually tell them to let it go for a few days. Uh, the other thing I was trying to encourage if they're going to use the access point is to make sure that the dealer has a network analyzer type tool, something that allows them to see signal strength of Wi-Fi signals. Like how good is that actual signal strength? So that they can actually place their panel in an ideal location and then go hold their cell phone using their analyzer app and see if that keypad's even a good install location, right? Say, hey, wait a minute. I can't get any signal here. There's no point in trying to put it here without creating a whole headache of, you know, save yourself the truck roll, save yourself the problem, try and convince the customer of another place to put a secondary keypad that makes more sense for the Wi-Fi signal. Um, mm -hmm. But usually then at that point, when that doesn't work, then I'll start saying, okay, if you're gutsy and don't mind driving back to the job site, you can use the customer's Wi-Fi next to still save time and money. But mm -hmm. ultimately, if you want to save it and go to the, the extreme solution that one stop shop is going to be generally I find the uh, secondary router Buy another router or something that can isolate a 2.4 mega or gigahertz frequency, not megahertz, uh, but isolate that frequency and that band for those keypads. Right. Um, I know in the past we've had places that have done that with the alarm.com one, for example, or I told guys to go to Walmart. Like Walmart's got a ton of cheap $30, $40 routers that you throw in and call it good. It doesn't even need an actual broadband yeah. connection. Yeah, so. I just did. Um, I was able to, I used a repeater. I repeated my access point as well. So I was able to use a repeater, repeat that access point off the panel. Uh, you, some people don't even realize that they can do both connect to the homeowner's Wi Fi, which you're going to want to do. But that's going to be you want that because you want that connection uh, via broadband right. with alarm.com. But then right. create the access point also, and then either extend that access point, um, or like you said, you know, or you could use something different. You could completely isolate it completely and go a different right. router. Or some people as popular as the alarm.com access points too. Right, so right. they're pretty, I think they're only like 30 bucks or something like that too. So that's the same thing as 
getting, you know, some kind of, you know, something to repeat or a guy says, Hey, thanks for telling me about repeating the access point. He's like, yeah, he just went and got, and I forget the brand name, whatever it was that he got, but he's like, I just got a cheap little, whatever I repeat it. It's working perfectly. I was like, yep, there you go, man. It's just, it oh, works thanks. a lot better. Uh, it doesn't go down quite as often really as much with it all the time, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I encourage dealers anymore now too to make sure they take networking classes. You know, previously we in our industry we've gotten spoiled for a lot of the residential side. Uh, Alarm.com made things really easy with plug and play logic and easy setup for <laughs> configuring Wi-Fi cameras. And so it's like now these dealers are having to deal with Wi-Fi keypads and they're like understanding how a router works. The difference between a modem and a router, a switch, all of these different things makes a huge difference in your understanding and your ability to troubleshoot it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I've been encouraging a lot of the technicians too to, hey, there's lots of free courses online you can take about networking. And that might be an idea for us too one day is to maybe offer some of our networking courses, do something where we can talk about it and explain networking as a more basic course. Um, so that might be something to note for later on, but definitely something that's valuable <laughs> uh, for for knowledge base, right? Right. Uh, I think we'll stick. Let's stick with the security, man. <laughs> I don't want to be jumping into. Uh, uh, although it does reach in some of our other brands now, yeah, right? You'd you you be touching it on your access yeah, control I, side. We had to take some. <laughs> yeah, we had to take those ourselves. You really right through. All right. Oh, company yeah, much. But yeah, I don't think nice there's company. any other ideas really, right? Um, what else, you know, uh, that's kind of the basic on it. Uh, I don't, it really does solve a lot of the issues uh, that people are having. Just get the connection from, to the remote keypad, the RK, off of the homeowner's Wi-Fi. You can connect to the right. homeowner's Wi-Fi, but you just have a separate connection. Uh, for the remote keypads that way. I was, when I did do the um, beta testing for the, when we were still beta testing the firmware that just came out the other uh, month, um, I was able to, when mine went, I did have one time in the three months that it went down and stayed down. Um, you know, it's like, you know, they've improved that. They've improved the firmware. The way I explained it in class uh, the other day is I was telling them, you know, hey, we just had to we had to fix the firmware because the firmware forgets that like, hey, you've, you, you've got a kid in the back seat. That's what the, the firmware keeps forgetting. And then, you know, kind of right. like have the cars now that beep at you to tell you, hey, check the back seat. There's somebody, right, you know, right. you know, is there somebody back there kind of thing? That's what we, you know, they had to improve the firmware where it was like, hey, you got a kid. Remember, don't forget your kid, you know, go connect back up with <laughs> and um and uh you know that's it's just kind of that, that's how i see it you know what they really needed to do and it, it does work a lot better but i did have the one time where it went down and i was able to reconnect it just by um i went on alarm.com on the and i just said um a hard reset and boom it reset my panel my panel when my panel reset the secondary keypad got hooked up the remote keypad connected oh, nice. back up to it really so you don't really have to run out to a client if a client is having that problem. I didn't get a second chance. Uh, it didn't happen again for me, but the next thing I was going to do was going to go to my panel and go, um, if you go into the, um, the uh, if you go in just to see the history and stuff like that, one of the things right. on there is when you look at the firmware, you have a reboot section that the customer can do. So I think that would be an easy one. I was going to test that one out next to say, hey, you know, if it happens, you know, in the customers up, you just on the phone with them, you can just ask them to go ahead and just push reboot and then right, reboot right. The panel. And I'm pretty sure that that would kick up with the newest firmware, the way it um, seems to be functioning much better. It would just kick up and and pick up its uh, the remote keypad if it did get lost and he forgot this kid was in the back seat. Um, so, you know. <laughs> You like my little weird analogy. Oh, I just I don't know. Analogies. I don't know where I don't know where I come up with it sometimes too. I just it just like pops into my head like hey, you know, how do I explain, you know, what we've done and how this is working and how this is thinking and what it, what it's doing. So Oh, it's dad logic, right? Like you become wiser as your kids get older because you have to explain things, right? So we're but trainers it, it, and we're having to explain, to, of explaining to things to the kids. It might be. I don't know. I don't oh. know. But yeah, so uh, no, I, I think, think that's pretty good options there for us. So, 
For sure. And it's one of those things, too. The only other thing I want to add is that, you know, to remind dealers to always make sure they let us know when they have tried all that and it still doesn't work. Because half the time, we're able to fix a lot of issues. Um, sometimes it is software. Sometimes it is the environment, things like that. But the more information we have back, the more we can improve our product. And I remember that's mm -hmm. one thing I always tell dealers is like, hey, I know it's frustrating, but you want stuff to improve, get better, then you got to let us know what's going on. And, and calling me and just telling me it doesn't work and saying, <laughs> send me a new one usually isn't the solution. I'm like, hey, we need to get as much information about this location. And half the time I find is dealers will solve their own problem by doing that. Once they start putting the puzzle pieces together, uh, they'll suddenly say, hey, yeah, the panel's on the other side of this giant, awesome, high-end aluminum fridge. And I'm wondering why none of my signals are getting through the fridge. Weird. Mm. You know, or, or, hey, this home was just built out of uh, rebarb and concrete really. cinder blocks. Okay, well, yeah, that might impede your signals range a little bit, so... It's always good to to get all as much information as possible mm -hmm. of those. But I think we've definitely hashed out some great solutions for the guys out there. Um, please make sure to let us know if you have any other ideas, guys, uh, for additional trainings, additional content, things like that. Uh, but I think that's what all the time we have for today. Scott, do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys, and have yourself a good one. Take care, everyone.